In the 17th century, there was still some hope that even if the Earth was not the center of the universe, it might be the only world. After millennia of philosophical debate, the issue was settled decisively in favor of what was called the plurality of worlds. They might be profoundly different from our planet. None of them might be as congenial for life. But the Earth was hardly the only one. This was the next in the series of great demotions, downlifting experiences, demonstrations of our apparent insignificance, wounds that science has delivered to human pride. Well, some hoped, even if the Earth isn't at the center of the universe, the Sun is. The Sun is our Sun. So the Earth is approximately at the center of the universe. But by the 19th century, observational astronomy had made it clear that the Sun is but one lonely star in a great self-gravitating assemblage of suns called the Milky Way Galaxy. Far from being at the center of the galaxy, our Sun, with its entourage of dim and tiny planets, lies in an undistinguished sector of an obscure spiral arm we are 30,000 light years from the center. Well, our Milky Way is the only galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is in fact one of billions, perhaps hundreds of billions of galaxies notable neither in mass nor in brightness, nor in how its stars are configured and arrayed. Some modern deep sky photographs show more galaxies beyond the Milky Way than stars within the Milky Way. Every one of them is an island universe containing perhaps a hundred billion suns. Such an image is a profound sermon on humility. Well then, at least our galaxy is at the center of the universe. Nope, this is wrong too. When the expansion of the universe was first discovered, Many people naturally gravitated to the notion that the Milky Way was at the center of the expansion and all the other galaxies running away from us. We now recognize that astronomers on any galaxy would see all the others running away from them unless they were very careful. They would all conclude that they were at the center of the universe. There is, in fact, no center to the expansion, no point of origin of the Big Bang. Well, even if there are hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars, no other star has planets. If there are no other planets beyond our solar system, perhaps there's no other life in the universe. Our uniqueness might then be saved. Today, we have firm evidence for at least three planets orbiting an extremely dense star. And we found, for more than half the stars with masses like the suns, that early in their careers, they're surrounded by great disks of gas and dust, out of which planets seem to form. Other planetary systems now look to be a cosmic commonplace. Maybe even world, something like the Earth. Well, if our position in space doesn't reveal our special role, our position in time does. We've been in the universe since the beginning, give or take a few days. We've been given special responsibilities by the Creator. The radioactive dating of rocks, the abundance of impact craters on many worlds, the evolution of the stars, and the expansion of the universe each provides compelling and independent evidence that our universe is many billions of years old. Despite the confident assertions of revered theologians that a world so old directly contradicts the word of God, and that at any rate information on the antiquity of the world is inaccessible except to faith. These lines of evidence as well would have to be manufactured by a deceptive and malicious deity, unless the world is much older than the literalists in the Judeo-Christian Islamic religion suppose. Ages rolled by before the earth began. More ages will run their course before it is destroyed. A distinction needs to be drawn between how old the earth is and how old the universe is. The immense interval of time between the origin of the universe and our epoch was two-thirds over before the Earth came to be. Some stars and planetary systems are billions of years younger, others billions of years older. But in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, 
the universe and the earth are created on the same day. As for humans, we're latecomers. We appear in the last instant of cosmic time. The history of the universe till now was 99.998% over before our species arrived on the scene. In that vast sweep of eons, we could not have assumed any special responsibilities for our planet or life or anything else. We were not here. Our common sense intuitions can be mistaken. Our preferences don't count. We do not live in a privileged reference frame. Well, even if our position, our epoch, our motion, and our world are not unique, maybe we are. We're different from the other animals. We're specially created. The particular devotion of the creator of the universe is evident in us. This position was passionately defended on religious and other grounds. But in the middle 19th century, Charles Darwin showed convincingly how one species can evolve into another by entirely natural processes, which come down to the heartless business of nature saving the heredities that work and rejecting those that don't. Man, in his arrogance, thinks himself a great work, worthy of the interposition of a deity. More humble, and I think truer, to consider him created from animals. The profound and intimate connections of humans with the other life forms on Earth has been compellingly demonstrated in the late 20th century by the new science of molecular biology. Well, even if we're closely related to some of the other animals, we're different, not just in degree, but in kind, on what really matters, reasoning, self-consciousness, tool-making, ethics, altruism, religion, language, nobility of character. Human uniqueness has been exaggerated, sometimes grossly so. Chimps reason, are self-conscious, make tools, show devotion, and so on. Chimps and humans have 99.6% of their active genes in common. Okay, maybe we're not much. Maybe we're humiliatingly related to apes, but at least we're the best there is. God and angels aside, we're the only intelligent beings in the universe. But the simple fact is that we have not yet found extraterrestrial life. We're in the earliest stages of looking. The question is wide open. If I had to guess, especially considering our long sequence of failed chauvinisms, I'd guess that the universe is filled with beings far more intelligent, far more advanced than we are. But of course, I might be wrong. Such a conclusion is at best based on a plausibility argument derived from the numbers of planets, the ubiquity of organic matter, the immense time scales available for evolution, and so on. It's not a scientific demonstration. The question is among the most fascinating in all of science. We are just developing the tools to treat it seriously. What about the related matter of whether we are capable of creating intelligences smarter than ourselves? Computers routinely do mathematics that no unaided human can manage, outperform world champions in checkers and grandmasters in chess, speak and understand English and other languages, write presentable short stories and musical compositions, learn from their mistakes, and competently pilot ships, airplanes, and spacecraft. Their abilities steadily improve. They're getting smaller, faster, and cheaper. Every year, the tide of scientific advance laps a little further ashore on the island of human intellectual uniqueness with its embattled castaways. The long-standing view, as summarized by the philosopher Immanuel Kant, that without man, the whole of creation would be a mere wilderness, a thing in vain, and have no final end, is revealed to be self-indulgent folly. A principle of mediocrity seems to apply to all our circumstances. We would not have known beforehand that the evidence would be so repeatedly and thoroughly incompatible with the proposition that human beings are at center stage in the universe. But most of the debates have now been settled decisively. 
in favor of a position that, however painful, can be encapsulated in a single sentence. We have not been given the lead in the cosmic drama. Perhaps someone else has. Perhaps no one else has. In either case, we have good reason for humility.